Hello YouTube. All right, today we are talking about inflatable hot tubs. Uh, like many of you, I purchased one of these on Prime Day and just to get a taste of having a hot tub before I would decide about buying a real one. It turns out I really enjoy this thing, but it's getting colder here in Michigan and it's time to either put it away or figure out a way to heat this thing up more because as anybody else in a colder climate knows, the heater that comes with these things right there it takes forever and ever and ever to heat these things up especially if it's cold outside and be at air temperatures cold you might get maybe three degrees an hour um, depending upon how cold it is outside so i started thinking and i picked up one of these this is called an immersion heater and it's mainly like a farm tool you're supposed to stick it in a bucket or in a trough or something to keep water from freezing for animals uh, this particular one i got at amazon heats up to 1500 degrees. There's other ones that go to 2000. Um, there might be other temperatures as well. This 1500 one, I've experimented with it a little bit. I can actually heat my hot tub up at at least four degrees per hour. So uh, maybe even more than that. I can heat the hot tub up practically fat, uh, twice as fast with the immersion heater and the built-in heater as I can with just the built-in heater. So for the 35 bucks it cost, it's well worth it to be able to heat the tub up twice as fast. Uh, the other thing I did was I insulated my cover and I'm gonna show you that and just show you how I use this emergent heater. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you the rest. Okay, so for my cover, I just got some fan fold insulation from, obviously it says Lowe's on it. This is just quarter inch green board fan fold insulation. And I just folded it over so it's double the thickness. So it's actually, two layers of the quarter inch so i've got about a half inch there um, i deflated the cover and then i measured the diameter or actually i just traced it out onto the insulation and then cut the insulation with um, a utility knife and i put the insulation inside i left the plug here open so that i could still air it up then i put the insulation inside on top of the, uh, the inflatable part blew it up and then it holds it in place. So now it's one solid unit and it doesn't uh, pop out at all. Just this alone really keeps the heat in overnight. It'll keep the heat in um, from dropping significantly overnight when it's cold outside to only dropping a little bit. Now the other part of this, I added this metal bar. This is aluminum so it won't rust in the water. You could do it with plastic or um, aluminum, something that's not, you don't want it to rust in the water so you don't want to use steel. But what I did was I just cut it to fit so it'll be held in by the fan fold and by the plastic. I bent the ends up a little bit and put some um, heavy duty duct tape over them so that they don't pierce through the cover. But the idea for this is I'm gonna hang the immersion heater off of it because the immersion heater, the immersion heater in theory is safe enough that you could just lay it on the bottom of the, the tub and it's not gonna damage the plastic. I'm a little uncomfortable with that. I just think it's awfully hot, but I wouldn't want it to damage the, the plastic in the tub. So what I want to do is I'm going to hang mine vertically and I want it to hang right in front of the outlet. So basically when the cover's on, I want this immersion heater to be hanging right like that so that the water coming out of the pump and out of the heater have, is having to blow across the, the heater and keep that water circulating. So that's what that metal rod is for, is for this immersion heater to hang on. In theory, you could just lay it on the bottom, but then the water isn't circulating as much, and I'm just worried about it getting hot, to, uh, too hot and damage the, the pool. So this is a real basic one. There's no temperature control. It's just a cord, that's it. There's no on off. You plug it in, it's on, and unplug it is off. That's all there is to it. The one thing you do need to know when using these immersion heaters, they use a fair amount of watts so the instructions on it said that you can't run it as, on the same outlet as a second heater or in this case as the pool pump and heater so you end up having to run a separate cord from somewhere else otherwise uh, it'll pop a gfci or even a circuit breaker because it's just too much uh, too much wattage being pulled by one outlet so that's kind of the only drawback but besides that this thing heats up at twice as fast uh, as it does with just the pool heater. So now I'm gonna put the lid on and just show you how this hangs on here and then we'll start heating this thing up. Okay, I got the cover in place. I got it clipped in on the back two clips. You can see the rod hanging there. So now I'm just gonna dangle the 
immersion heater through that uh, rod. So I'll have to put the phone down so I can take, um, put that in place. Okay, so there it is. It's just dangling. When it lowers down, it's gonna be right in front of the outlet. So the water pumping out, the hot water pumping out, it's gonna have to go across the heater and it's gonna keep stirring the water up. And this is gonna make the pump or the pool heat up faster than it does by itself. All right, so here in Michigan, it's a fall day and it's currently 50 degrees. The pump right now is showing 68 degrees. And I'm gonna plug in the immersion heater just so I can mark how fast that it actually um, heats up. It is currently exactly 12 o'clock on the nose. So that's convenient. So I'll be able to see how many hours it takes for this thing to get up to 104 degrees. And then we'll divide by the number of hours and figure out how many degrees per hour we're achieving. Here we go. Okay, it's been an hour and 15 minutes, already up to 73 degrees from 68. That's five degrees in an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, it's been about three hours. It's up to 81 degrees. We started at 68 degrees. Okay, so far we've managed 13 degrees in three hours. That's 4.33 degrees per hour. Uh, without the immersion heater, I think the best I can get is about 2.8 degrees per hour. So I'm heating it up a, a lot more rapidly using this immersion heater. Um, we'll check in in a couple more hours, see if this thing goes all the way up to 104 in time to uh, take a dip tonight. It's now six o'clock at night. We've been running for six hours and we are up to 95 degrees. We started at 68. It's now seven o'clock at night. We're up to 97 degrees. Been running for seven hours. Started at 68. The air temperature outside has dropped to 47 from 50 and we're still climbing. Okay, here we are, eight o'clock PM, 102 degrees. Remember we started at 68 degrees. Okay, and that's a wrap. The tub went up 34 degrees in eight hours, which is 4.25 degrees per hour. I can get about 2.8 degrees if I'm lucky with just the hot tub heater by itself without the immersion heater. So this is significantly faster. In fact, without the immersion heater, there's no way I'd be getting in the hot tub tonight because with the air temperature outside, it started at 50 earlier today. Now we're into the 40s there's no way it would have gotten up to 102 um, in order to get in it this evening and I'd just be out of luck for tonight. So that's proof of concept, the immersion heater and the insulation top works. Um, highly recommend it. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Sure appreciate it. Thanks for watching, bye.